Hi, and welcome to the second of our three-part series on cell structure here at the end of our matter unit. I figured I would start this one by talking a little bit about how cells got their names. This gentleman here is Robert Hooke, and he is the person who coined the term cells, a term that he came up with by while observing the structures that he saw inside a piece of cork plant tissue. He thought that they looked like the cells that monks stay in in monasteries, and so he named them as such, and it has stuck. The question that we're going to try to answer in this video is how are cells organized? We're going to talk about universal organelles, organelles that we find in all cells, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the differences that we see when we look at eukaryotic cells compared to prokaryotic cells. Let's begin by talking about prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are only unicellular, and they have no internal membrane-bound organelles. They have structures inside of themselves, but those structures are not covered in membrane. The name prokaryotic refers to the lack of a membrane-bound nucleus enclosing their DNA. Pro meaning before and carry-on meaning the center of the cell. At the same time, we should point out that prokaryotic cells are by far the most successful lineages of life on Earth. They have the greatest amount of genetic diversity. They make up two of the three domains of cells on the planet, and they are by far the most numerous type of life, both on the earth and in your body. Something like nine out of every 10 cells in your body are prokaryotic cells that live inside of your gastrointestinal tract. Looking at the parts that we find inside of prokaryotic cells, we see a couple of features that we definitely should spotlight. The DNA is not in the nucleus, but it is organized in the middle of the cell in a region referred to as the nucleoid. Prokaryotic cells have one chromosome that is circular in structure. I mean, it's huge, so it looks like a giant tangle. But what I mean by circular is you can start at one end and go all the way around and come back to that end. Prokaryotes are also unique in that they have small extra chromosomal circular pieces of DNA, which are called plasmids. Eukaryotes, generally speaking, do not have plasmids inside of their cells. This is an electron micrograph of an E. coli cell that's been burst apart, and you can see its chromosome splayed out like a big mess of spaghetti. I guess you're going to have to take my word for it that it is, in fact, circular in nature. The next organelle that we're going to spotlight are the ribosomes, which are a universal organelle found in prokaryotes and eukaryotes both. Ribosomes are responsible for making protein. They consist of two subunits made out of RNA, a special type of RNA called ribosomal RNA, and protein complex together. Prokaryotic ribosomes and eukaryotic ribosomes are slightly different from each other in terms of their size and the molecules that put them together, but all ribosomes have this two subunit structure put together. Moving to the outside of the cell, we have a cell wall present in prokaryotic cells. This, of course, gives the prokaryotic cells structural support, and it's made out of a modified polysaccharide called peptidoglycan, and this image is just showing you how the peptidoglycan subunits are all associated to make the bacterial cell wall. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list of prokaryotic organelles, but it's the main ones that you should be familiar with. Prokaryotes also have other organelles present that are not necessarily present in all cells. For instance, this image of a bacterium very similar to an E. coli has a flagellum that assists it in moving around its environment. It also has a capsule which covers it and helps to protect it, particularly from things like a mammalian immune system. And it's got these structures called pili, which help it attach to surfaces and adhere to them. These are structures that you will see in different types of bacterial cells, but they're by no means universal among all of the different types of prokaryotic cells that we see on the planet. The other major type of cell that we see is the eukaryotic cell, and we've, we've broken that down into two major subtypes, which are the plant-like and the animal-like eukaryotes. Eukaryotic organisms are both unicellular and multicellular. In fact, the only multicellular life on the planet, including us and anything else you can do with your eyes, are exclusively eukaryotic in terms of their cellular organization. And they have many different membrane-bound organelles inside of them, including, of course, their nucleus, which is how they get their name, the prefix U meaning true and karyo meaning center to reference the fact that they have an actual nucleus. There is a reason why the only multicellular life we see on the planet is made out of eukaryotic cells, and that has to do with the benefits that come from being able to compartmentalize the inside of the cell into a variety of different conditions and environments in all of the different organelles that are present. A prokaryotic cell carries out all of its life functions, but the internal conditions inside of that prokaryotic cell have to be relatively uniform throughout the entire cell. This is somewhat limiting in terms of what any one particular prokaryotic cell can do at any one moment in time. 
eukaryotes are not bound by that same restriction. Because they have all of these internal compartments, they can vary the conditions widely in any one organelle and not worry about affecting the conditions in any other region of the cell. To go with one example, let's look at the mitochondria, which is the organelle used by eukaryotic cells for the process of aerobic cellular respiration. The pH of the region of the mitochondria, known as the intermembrane space, is about 6.9, which is almost three times lower than the pH of the surrounding cytoplasm. Additionally, the inside membrane of the mitochondria is specialized for aerobic respiration and has high concentrations of the proteins that are necessary for, for that process to be able to occur inside of the mitochondria. By compartmentalizing the aerobic cellular respiratory process into the mitochondria, eukaryotes can provide the conditions necessary for that process to occur optimally at the level of the mitochondria and not worry about how that would affect all of the surrounding environments inside of the cell. This of course extends to all of the processes that occur inside of a eukaryotic cell. It's compartmentalization that gives eukaryotic cells the ability to specialize into all the different varieties that make up the eukaryotic domain of life. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can explain why cells are the basic functional unit for living systems. Make sure that you can compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Make sure that you can recognize the major cellular structures found in prokaryotic cells, describe their structures, and explain their functions. And finally, make sure that you can describe the advantages that come with the increased internal compartmentalization that we see in eukaryotic cells. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.